In general, a child with type 1 diabetes needs insulin every time they eat to balance the carbs in the meal or snack. In an ideal situation, the body would always have the right amount of insulin to match the glucose in the blood. However, life is tricky and there are a lot of things that can affect this balance. Hyperglycemia, or high blood glucose, happens when the body has too much glucose and not enough insulin. Insulin allows glucose into the cells to be used for energy, but if there is not enough, the glucose stays in the bloodstream. If a child's blood glucose is higher than their correction target, you may need to give additional insulin to correct their blood glucose. This is called a correction dose. To calculate the amount of insulin to give in a correction dose, you can follow this simple formula to get the number of units of insulin to give. First, subtract the child's correction target from the current blood glucose. The difference is the amount you need to correct. Second, divide the amount you need to correct by the child's correction factor. This number is given by the child's diabetes care team, but it may change over time. The result is the number of units of insulin you will need to correct the child's blood glucose. You may need to round up or down to the nearest half unit, depending on if the insulin is given by syringe or by insulin pen. Let's try an example. Let's assume a child has a correction target of 120 and a correction factor of one unit of insulin for every 20 points above the correction target. The child checks their blood glucose before lunch and discovers it is 300. 300 is outside of our target range and well above the child's correction target. They will need to give insulin to cover the carbs in their lunch, but they can also deliver a correction dose to bring that blood glucose result down. To do this, they will subtract their correction target, 120, from the current blood glucose of 300. 300 minus 120 equals 180. This is the amount the child needs to correct. Next, we will divide the amount to correct by the child's correction factor, 20. 180 divided by 20 equals 9. The child should receive 9 units of bolus insulin along with the insulin they need to cover the carbs in their lunch to treat the high blood glucose. We'll talk more about the correction factor and how to use it in our insulin module later on. There are certain times when it is not a good idea to give a correction dose, even if the child's blood glucose is higher than the target range. Giving a correction dose during these times might cause the blood glucose to drop quickly and cause a low blood glucose or hypoglycemia instead. You should not give a child a correction dose if the child's blood glucose level is lower than their correction target, it has been less than three hours since the child was given a correction dose, it has been less than one hour since the child engaged in vigorous activity. Everyone with T1D is different and every child's diabetes care plan will need to be individualized for their life. These are general guidelines that can help steer you on the path but it is always recommended that you talk with the child's diabetes care team if you feel they need correction doses too often or you're having trouble deciding when to give them. The diabetes care team will try to work with the child's caregivers to determine a care routine that involves as few correction doses as possible, but it is best to be prepared on how to give them when necessary. In the next video, we'll discuss how high blood glucose can cause ketones and how to check for them.